हेलो एवरी वन टूडेज टॉपिक इज सेटअप टाइम एंड होल्ड टाइम टूडे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग टू पॉइंट्स मेनली वन इज वाट इज सेटअप टाइम और होल्ड टाइम एंड सेकेंड वन इज वाइट इज रिक्वायर्ड इन डिजिटल लॉजिक डिजाइन दिस इज ए सिंपल रजिस्टर सर्किट हुच कंटेन्स थ्री नंबर ऑफ फ्लिप फ्लॉप्स दिस इज माई क्लॉक सिग्नल एंड दिस इज सम रैंडम इनपुट D, this one, okay. So as per the behavior of a register circuit, so once this uh, clock edge comes, then we get our Q zero after the first clock. Then after second clock, this Q zero we get at the output of this Q one. Sorry, output of this uh, flip flop, second flip flop. So Q one we get, and after third clock we get this one here, okay. That means this is the Q two. So first clock when comes, we get Q zero. Second clock Q two and third clock Q three. When we get Q Q one, that time Q zero will be zero, and when we get Q two, that time Q one will be zero, and Q zero will be zero. Okay. See here, the clock. Comes at exactly zero nanosecond. Let's say this is five nanosecond, and the second clock exactly at ten nanosecond. But in the real world, nothing is instantaneous. See here, the data is sampled with respect to this clock. That means whenever this uh, clock comes at zero nanosecond, at the same time, instantly, this input data is sampled, and we get our Q zero. but what we have to remember is data are sampled instantaneously right on positive edges of clock but in reality nothing is instantaneous due to various delays at various level okay in digital world signal transition seems instantaneous see here it looks like this data this input data is sampled with respect to this clock at 0 nanosecond then 10 nanosecond then exactly at 20 nanosecond but in and but in real world but that is analog world it is not instantaneous okay let me explain this one see here the transition from low to high this is instantaneous right that means 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 here the high to low exactly at 5 nanosecond then low to low to high transition exactly at 0 nanosecond this clock this data low to high exactly at 0 nanosecond then again high to low exactly at 0 nanosecond but what we have to remember is change is never instantaneous in analog world see here this is my flip flop and this is my input pin and this is my clock pin the the input d is coming from somewhere that means that is from external world the source is somewhere then the clock signal there is a clock tree okay there is a concept uh, there is there is a clock tree from where let's say this is oscillator because oscillator generates clock right from that source the signal the clock signal is coming so that means it is also coming from somewhere right then it has to reach this point and it has to reach this point this data pin data has to reach this data pin and the clock has to reach the clock pin of this flip flop and it has to data has to pass through pass through many number of this uh, inverter or this uh, buffer then combinational circuit the clock signal has to pass through many number of this inverter then buffer then it will reach this at this point once this data and clocks are available at the input of this flip flop then only we get our output okay so definitely and and there is a delay this wire delay also this wire is also taking going to take time so all this all this logic there is combinational circuit or this inverter or this uh, buffer or this or they are going to add delay to your circuit okay so definitely this transition is never instantaneous this data transition is never instantaneous it takes time okay that we have to understand here see so this is this is not the exact this is not the actual this clock sync clock transition or input transition okay this is the actual transition see the clock signal it is slowly it is rising right from low to high this is then high to low also slowly it is the transition is happening here then this data 
you might have seen this diagram okay data what it means is the data is changing see the, the, your input data is 1 okay but it is changing from 1 to 0 then 0 to 1 0 to 1 1 to 0 and finally it is settled at 1 that means we finally after some time we are getting the valid data same same way your input is 0 then it is then because of some kind of glitches why this is why this happens this uh data ch data transition from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 it is because of the glitches or we can say some kind of electrical noise okay input is 1 anyhow the uh, this one this one will be 1 all the time but in between what happens because of the glitch the signal 1 to 0 0 to 1 the transition happens okay so this is the valid data so here this is source coming from source then let's say this is reaching this point it is reaching flip-flop input to the flip-flop so within this time frame the data is not stable the data is changing continuously okay because of some delay let's say some delay or some kind of electrical noise okay so now I believe that you guys understood that uh, this uh, change is never instantaneous okay and what exactly this uh, buffer is many times we have seen right in digital logic circuit this is a buffer and we know that whatever input you give the same output we get at the buffer the output of this buffer actually the buffers are current amplifier that we have to know okay current amplifier it amplifies the weak signal it but it is a circuit right it is a combinational circuit current amplifier it is a there is a if you go little bit deep then definitely all these circuits are all these circuits are made up of a transistor or MOS only okay so no doubt it is amplifying the signal but it is also adding delay because this propagation from input to output takes time so it is also going to add delay see this is the input right this is the input this input has to reach this point this this data this input pin of this uh, flip-flop then the clock has to reach here from the source then second flip-flop it has to reach from here to here then third flip-flop it has to reach from here this point to this point so what happens here the clock signals or the data signal they becomes weak on their path to this input pin of this of flip-flops so we need to amplify those signals and this is the reason why you we use buffer these are digital buffer okay we use buffer both for this input signal and clock signal okay but anyhow these these buffers these buffers are going to add delay to your circuit and definitely the transition the transition won't be instantaneous that time this is the example of a uh, deep flip-flop and it is a trans this is not a exactly deep flip-flop actually this is a transparent ledge okay see here this is the d input this is the clock then it has to pass through this all these NAND gates and this inverter then we get out we get the input signal at the output of this uh, here and it is reflected at Q so it has to pass through all these all these gates right all these basic gates so definitely it is going to take time in it is never instant instantaneous right it is going to take time for D to pass to this point and this clock signal to pass through this one it is going to take time so let's say the input signal comes at 0 nanosecond but stable data is propagated to Q and Q dex after all the gate delay all this gate delay and even if the wire delay also signal changes from high to low high to low or low to high this is going to also take time right signal transition this this line I will explain okay I have one whole slide to explain this this theory part okay and all this delay the delay depends on your gate capacitance because if you go deeper then all these deep flip flops are nothing but it is made up of MOS circuit okay that means CMOS so this delay depends on the gate capacitance of MOS in logic gates and switching time of Mo MOS how fast the switching is happening so flip flop takes certain amount of time for high to low or low to high transition and, and during this change that is 
this low to high or high to low in during this change many things happen with the logic gate okay so what we have to remember here is our minimum requirement should be data must be valid for some finite amount of time around the clock edge this one we will see again i will explain this one okay this line so what this device manufacturer they do because anyhow we are going to get the delay due to various reasons so what this uh, device manufacturers they do they provide a window of time they provide finite amount of time to guarantee the output and this time this window of time that is provided by a device manufacturer okay what you have to remember is the set of time and hold time is provided by the device manufacturer it is not provided the provided by the gate itself this has to be decided by this device manufacturer okay the time that this device manufacturer provides the inf the finite amount of time to guarantee the output so that we are going to get the correct output and that time is called that finite time is called setup time or hold time okay it should not be violated this setup time and hold time should not be violated else what will happen unpredictable output behavior or oscillation output unpredictable output behavior means you should get one if you if you give one input this is deep flip flop you should get one but this is uh, this is predictable unpredictable means it can be zero it can be zero also we cannot no one can say okay so this is unpredictable output due to various we can say glitches or electrical noises okay so the behavior is unpredictable we cannot say the exact output and or the oscillation at a oscillation means it the signal the output will oscillate between two like 1 to 0 then 1 then 0 then 1 then 0 this is called oscillation okay so what exactly the setup time and hold time is setup time is the minimum time for which data should be valid or stable at the input before edge of clock and hold time is that means your data should be valid before this pause edge of clock before this pause edge of clock comes this time this time this finite amount of time is called setup time and hold time is your data should be valid after this pause edge of positive after this clock edge comes and this is called hold time okay but the question arises here is why the data should be valid why data should be valid before and after edges of clock okay let me explain this one in details so this is actually this all see this d flip flop looks like this okay this is d d then this is a clock then this is q but if you see this internal structure the internal circuit then it is all cmos circuit cmos complementary mos at transistor level okay and how this looks like actually this is the actual d flip flop at mos level this circuit is okay this is the d flip flop circuit and it is made up of inverters all these are inverters okay this is p mos this is n mos so 1 2 3 4 5 number of inverters are there and this is called transmission gate this is called transmission gate 1 2 3 4 number of transmission gates this is my d input this is q and this sorry this is q and this is q bar and what are this tra uh, this transmission gate how this works this transmission gates see this is how transmission gate looks like okay so it is made up of one n mos this is n mos and this is a p mos that means okay let me explain this way this transmission gate it has one input one output then two control signal this is this a and a bar here is the control signal okay it is made up of one n mos this is n mos and this is p mos actually transmission gates are used to build logic gate in digital circuit okay that you have to remember okay how it works and these are control signal this a and a bar are control signal so when let's say in in see for uh, we know that this n mos is active when this a equal to 1 and when this a equal to 1 1 of bar equal to 0 0 0 1 so this p max p mos so when we gi we give a equal to 1 then both n mos and p mos now are active so when 
एक्टिव मीन्स इट प्रोवाइड्स ए पाथ इट इज क्लोज दैट मीन्स दैट मीन इनपुट कैन इनपुट कैन प्रोपागेटेड टू इट इनपुट कैन पास टू दिस आउटपुट थ्रू दिस पी मॉस और थ्रू दिस एन मॉस दैट मीन्स इट हैज टू पाथ नाउ टू रीच आउटपुट ओके दिस इज हाउ इट वर्क ओके so when in so when a equal to 1 whatever input you have the same input we get at the output side okay and when this control signal a equal to 0 a equal to 0 because when a equal to 0 this will remain open this circuit sorry this uh this pmos and this will remain open that mean inactive so output we get high impedance okay same when input equal to 1 and a equal to 1 then we get the same input at the output side if it is a equal to 0 that means we get high impedance okay and the equivalent circuit for this uh, transmission gate is one resistance one capacitance this capacitance is drain capacitance okay because this is p this is n mos this is p mos so the drain capacitance and this transmission gate provides a delay this is a rc circuit so definitely it will provide a delay and that is rc delay so transmission gate also provides delay and that delay is rc r equivalent and c equivalent c is the drain capacitance and how to find this r r equal r is you want to find r then it is this is the formula okay this is the actual circuit this is the actual circuit of this uh, d flip flop okay d flip flop circuit so this is my transmission gate this is inverter first inverter second third and fourth inverters this clock and clock bar okay this controls the switching of transmission gate that is what i have already explained okay so it has four number of transmission gate 1 2 1 2 3 and 4 so let's name let's do the naming here t1 t2 t3 and t4 so when clock equal to 0 when clock equal to 0 T1 and T4 both are active. That means on. And when clock equal to one, clock equal to one, T2 and T3 active. And when T2 and T3 active, means T1 and T4 off. Okay. So clock equal to zero means this is P MOS. Clock equal to zero means this is active. This clock equal to zero means clock invert one. One means N N MOS active. Okay. So like this, you have to analyze. when clock equal to 0 and d equal to 0 the input d equal to 0 and clock equal to 0 clock equal to 0 we know that t1 and t4 on t1 and t4 on means the gate is closed and it, pro it provides a path okay this one and t2 t t3 off means this provides a open circuit okay this provides a open circuit so now new data continuously enters through t1 because this path is closed now transmission gate is closed then the signal has to pass through this inverter it cannot pass through this one right because this is open so it has to pass through this one w x then it will reach y node then it will reach this point this is open so it cannot pass through this one right so it will it the signal the e, d input it will wait here it will reach it reaches this point z node and it will wait okay unless and until this path is closed unless and until this t2 is this t2 is closed okay so it this input data enters through t1 and wait at the input of gate t2 this is t2 right until clock equal to 1 because when clock equal to 1 then this gate this transmission gate is active and this one will be closed and it will provide a path so input reaches z so the path is d w x y and z and as d equal to 0 so definitely this z equal z will be also 0 see here this path is this there is a path here right because this is a closed closed loop this is a so whatever data we have at this node initially that data will remain it will circulate here in this path so whatever data we have before 
that same data will be available here you remember this one when clock equal to 0 when clock equal to 0 the output the output of flip flop stores the previous data you remember this one when clock equal to 0 this time the output the output of this flip flop it stores the previous value this is what it means so whenever this clock equal to 0 whatever data we have previously stored the output th here Q that data it will that data it will circulate okay it will remain here and from that what we can say when clock equal to 0 the flip flop stores the previous value or previous data okay we have to hold the data stable for a period when clock is changing so far clock has not changed right clock equal to 0 clock equal to 0 now say when clock equal to 1 when same data we have d equal to 0 and now clock equal to 1 when clock equal to 0 we have here z equal to 0 means z equal to 0 is available here 0 is available here and it is waiting for this clock to be 1 so when clock equal to 1 what happens t1 and t4 off this is off means this is a open circuit and t2 this is also open circuit and t2 and t3 on means this is on now it provides a closed closed path that means okay so when as t1 is off t1 is off it is open circuit means it doesn't allow any new data and previously stored data at z that means z equal to 0 was stored here when clock equal to 0 and previously stored data at z then what it will do it will now this provides a path so it will pass to this this point q and we get q equal to 0 and this is the reason when when clock equal to 0 clock equal to 0 whatever data we have previously stored data that data this is d this is clock and this is q whenever clock equal to 0 it stores the previous data it stores the previous data okay it stores the previous data and when clock equal to 1 then whatever data we have wh whatever data we have before clock equal to 0 so before clock equal to 0 sorry before clock equal to 1 before clock equal to 1 we have d equal to 0 so when clock age comes clock age comes that data the same data will reach output and we get the same data at the output of this flip flop this is how it works and the path here is w then sorry uh, the path here is z then w then x then m then n and then q okay so we here we get the get the data at output q and this is the reason this is the reason okay let me show you something this one here when clock equal to 0 before this clock edge comes d equal to 0 so when clock equal to 1 comes the same data d equal to 0 data will reach q the output of flip flop this one okay then it will remain there then when it will remain there when clock equal to 0 now again it will check clock equal to 0 we have d equal to 1 d equal to 1 when clock equal to 1 comes this d data this input data d equal to 1 will it will it will reach q output of flip flop then we get 1 here okay this is how it works the, this is this is the behavior of a flip flop right so at most level also you can understand like this okay and so whatever data we, we get here let what we got here q equal to 0 we, we get here and this q data because so here q equal to 0 it has two paths 
it has two number of paths right one path is this one and one way is this one it will reach to this point p point this is node this one okay it will reach here and it will remain it will remain here okay so it stops here it stops here unless this is closed this is closed okay so if d changes changes can be seen at z so when d changes changes can be seen at z when clock equal to low already we, we discussed and it appears at the output when clock equal to high already i explained this one okay see this one let me explain okay when q equal to 1 what we saw here when q equal to 1 we got this q equal to 0 right and this q equal to 0 will remain here remain here till clock equal to 0 because when clock equal to 0 then only it is closed so it will remain you if you see this one when clock equal to 1 clock equal to 1 this one the data the data remains the data remains whatever data we have it remains okay Un unless uh, when there is a data change when q equal to 0 unless there is a data change when q equal to 0 okay so as data appears at the output only when clock equal to high so data should be present at z before clock equal to high so before clock equal to high data must be present at z means this point if due to some reason delay the delay reason means due to delay let's say due to delay data doesn't reach z means data could not reach this point z and it is in between x to y it is in between x to y and before clock edge see before clock uh, the data should be present here so that this data whatever data I, we have here it will reach q okay when clock equal clock is high but let's say due to some reason data is not present uh, present here and data is in between x and y then what will happen then because anyhow this z has some some data may not be the new data but some data let's say z equal to initially z equal to 0 new data came d equal to let's say d equal to 1 at clock equal to 0 at clock equal to 0 d equal to 1 came so this d equal to 1 must reach this point so when clock equal to 1 so when this clock equal to 1 then this d this d equal to 1 will reach q right but due to some reason due to some reason let's say this d could not reach and it is here it reached only this point and it is now it is in between x and y then what will happen then then whenever clock equal to high this data this is our real data this data can't reach it is not going to reach this one right this portion in that case what will happen z still stores the old data because we had old data here z equal to 0 so z still stores old data but x or y has new data x or y has new data but z still stores old data so we cannot tell which data will be sample at positive edges of clock so here it is unpredictable behavior here the circuit will show unpredictable behavior because this is our new data and this data this one we should get here but because of some reason because of some kind of hardware glitch or some electrical noise our output data is unpredictable it can be one or it can be zero and we cannot see unpredictable means we cannot say whether it is a one or zero we know that when d equal to d equal to 1 clock equal to 0 that data should be that data should be present here when clock equal to 1 but but here what happens because it could not reach this point and it is in between here so we cannot predict this is this data will be 1 so whatever data we have that is stored data at z 
दैट वन वी गेट ओके दिस इज अनप्रेडिक्टेबल एज वैलिड डेटा इज एबसेंटेड जेड एंड दिस मे कॉज इनस्टेबिलिटी ओके डेफिनेटली दिस इज गोइंग टू चेंज द सर्किट बिहेवियर राइट सो वॉट वॉट इज द मेन पॉइंट हेयर सो इट इज नेसेसरी टू मेंटेन स्टेबल डाटा एट इनपुट एट द इनपुट इट इज नेसेसरी टू मेंटेन स्टेबल डाटा विच रिजल्ट स्टेबल डाटा एट जेड If you maintain stable data as input, then it will definitely it will result stable data at Z. Okay, and which lead if stable data is present here Z, that means definitely stable data will get at the output also. Okay, without meta stability. So what exactly a setup time is? The setup time actual actual meaning of setup time is the data travel from the time it takes for the data the input data to travel from D to this point till this point. So this is. You see this green one, the green color. So this time, this time, this time, this time, this time, this time is, or you can say till this time. This, the time it takes for the data to reach from D to this Z, Z, is called the setup time. Minimum time for which data should be stable, because to reach here, a data to reach stable data to reach. the input data to reach z huh. the time it takes the time it takes is this time plus this time means this transmission gate time this transmission gate time plus this g1 time plus this g2 time g2 time means this this time so this is the actual meaning of setup time okay then uh, what is a hold time see we know that when clock equal to high clock equal to 1 t1 and t4 off But what happens? The T1 doesn't turn off instantly. See, if you see this one, this will turn off. This this one will be this one will turn off when clock equal to zero and clock bar equal to one, right? If clock equal to zero, means definitely clock bar equal to one. Then only. it will be turned off completely it will be turned off but what happens how we are going to get clock bar this clock signal has to pass through a inverter okay so this is a inverter so definitely it is going to take time let's say if clock equal to 0 nanosecond the clock signal we get at 0 nanosecond then definitely clock bar will take some time at least let's say 2 nanosecond okay so there so it will take time so this t1 doesn't turn off instantly because clock and clock bar has to come has to be active at same time then only this transmission gate then only this transmission gate will be turned off fully so t1 doesn't turn off instantly after rising edge of clock okay it takes some time edge clock passes through many buffer because the clock and again this clock has to pass through if you remember this one already i explained this one this is the clock source that is a, that let's say it is oscillator the clocks the clock has to pass through this clock pin of this flip flop right so it passes through many buffer and inverter and reach t1 there's it a gate of this transmission this a uh, transmission gate the gate the pin of this transmission gate okay so it takes time to close so there is a finite time delay so and there is a finite time delay between this clock and clock bar because clock passes through inverter and gives clock bar until t1 turn off completely until t1 turn off completely new data should not enter because we know that when this uh it is off means this one once it is off fully off that means open circuit new data cannot pass through this one it will not allow it will not allow new data right but it is but it is not completely off we think it is off t1 is off but it is not completely off so possibility is there that during that time when it is when it is trying to be off that means this is 1 to 0 right this transition so during this time let's say this is a clock so during this time period when this clock is being off 
during this time possibility is there that new data enters new data enters through this one so in that scenario what will happen so if so see until t1 turn off completely new data should not enter or change and disturb the data which is being captured or stored at wxz so possibility is there that new data may come and it will disturb the already previous stored data okay if data change happens before t1 is off and data reach w node w or x and stored at z and stored at z means this point stored at z means this point then what will happen that uh, stored at z before positive edge of clock then new data is stored and not currently stored data so it will replace so new data so new data will replace this one so if new data comes if new data comes let's say old data is stored here and it is waiting for let me explain this one again let's say o let's say z equal to 0 when clock equal to 0 and this data is waiting for this input to be sorry this clock to be 1 this clock to be 1 so that this z equal to 0 will pass to this uh, output okay and it is possible when it is completely off let and it is as t1 is not turned off instantly and when it is trying to be turned off let's say new data came new data came and it entered and it reached here new data let's say it is d equal to 1 this data should be available here after clock equal to 1 but due to due to this uh, this t1 is not turned off instantly if this new data reached here and if this d equal to 1 replace this z equal to 0 now z equal to 1 now what will happen now this z equal to 1 new data will it will pass it will pass through all these gates and it will reach q so this is a unpredictable behavior right we should get z equal to 0 here but now what we are getting here z equal to 1 here okay and so this this is unexpected data and it causes meta stability this is the meaning of meta stability okay so data hold time is required after the positive edge so that data set at clock equal to 0 so that data set that is whatever data we have when clock equal to 0 can be stored in the master and which in turn passes to output queue so what is the requirement here is it necessary to ensure stable data at w there should be stable data there should be stable data here this w there should be stable data here so it is necessary to ensure stable data at w simply meaning the meaning of this one is clock is off completely okay so what is whole time the actual meaning of whole time is data travel time from d to w the time it takes see the time it takes for the input data and reach this w is called the whole time okay this is called the whole time this is the actual meaning of whole time and it simply means wh when this input data will reach w and and that is called stable data stable data means there should not be any new data coming it is only possible when this this is completely off this one is completely off okay this is what it is written here whole time is data travel from d to w the minimum time for which data should be stable or held at input after active edge of clock what is the meaning of this one this whole the definition of whole time means clock is completely off if clock is completely off then only stable data is going to be present here if t1 is not off completely then what will happen because data 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 are coming continuously and if new data comes continuously 
and when T1 is trying to be off, that time every time it will replace. It will replace one by one whatever data we have at W. Let's say first one one was there. T1 is not off and it is trying to be off. Then let's say zero came suddenly. Then it will be replaced. Then let's say one came. Let's say zero came. So it here all these data are unstable, right? We are not getting stable data at Z. Z sorry W. This is the meaning of this one. So it means clock is completely off and then only when completely off then only valid data is available at W. As when clock completely off no incoming new data possible. So whole time this is the time window this is the time window provided by the device manufacturer for the clock to be off completely off and valid data is available. This is the actual meaning of whole time. Okay or we can say it is the time period for which transmission gate is completely off because when transmission gate is completely off then there will be valid data available at W. Okay. So setup time is always positive whole time can be positive zero or negative. So before after this passage of clock this time window this time window is called whole time and before clock age comes this time window is called setup time. So in between we have this this time period in between this setup time window and whole time window data can data can change. Okay. This is a uh, this is for TTL logic. Okay. If you remember this one uh, for input if see 1 and 0 are nothing but voltage or current strength okay there is nothing called 1 or 0 these are all vo either voltage or or current okay so for a TTL level if the voltage is in between if input voltage if input voltage is in between 0 to 0 0.8 then it is called low or 0 if the voltage is in between 2 to 5 volt then it is called high or 1 and for output if voltage is in between 0 to 0 0.4 volt then it is called low and if it is from 2.7 to 5 it is called high and if in between 0 0.8 to 2 volt it is unpredictable sorry not unpredictable undefined we cannot say whether it is a 0 or whether it will be 1. This it is a forbidden area and for output 0 0.4 to 2.7 it is a uh, forbidden area okay we cannot say okay. so already you saw this picture right so here this is valid 1 this is valid 0 this is valid 1 and this is valid 0 in between this one this one 1 0 0 1 this transition we can relate to this one because in let's say it is 5 volt let's say it is 5 volt in between this one let's say it is the transition is let's say it is 1.2 volt 1.2 volt then 1.2 volt it falls in this region right 0 0.8 to 2 volt and we cannot set it 0 or 1 so this is invalid one okay this frame is invalid frame and see this 0 to 5 volt 5 5 volt let's say 5 the input is 5 volt and it is considered as logic one but what happens let me explain little bit about this one this uh, capacitor see there is a capacitor right and the capacitor stores charge right and the storing of charge is not sudden it's slowly slowly the, the charge is stored here and what we get VC that is capacitor voltage okay so voltage rising from 0 volt to 5 volt is not sudden so let's say it is 0 0 means if it stores 0 to 0 0.8 volt 0 to 0 0.8 volt M and 
it is interpreted as one when this capacitor stores C. This is my analog input, and we are get we are getting zero or one digital. This zero or one, how we are getting? This is analog five volt. How we are how we are going to get zero or one digital? It is possible because of this ADC analog to digital converter. Okay, so what happens here? When this one is closed, the switch is closed, then th there is a capacitor in front of this ADC. There is a capacitor. This five volt will be stored here, and and it is not sudden. It is zero zero to zero point one volt, zero point two volt, zero point three volt. Then slowly, slowly, it stores five volt. Okay. Then that five volt, that five, that means there is a time frame, right? Let's say zero to zero point eight volt, it wants to store. So definitely, capacitor is going to take time. Let's say it is going to store three to five volt. Then definitely, it is going to take time. Because this voltage has to range from zero, then zero to one, then one to two, then three, then four, then five volt. So capacitor is going to take time. Your charging time, your no charging time and discharging time. So capacitor takes time to charge and capacitor takes time to discharge. And once the charge is stored here, that means it is interpreted as voltage. That voltage is instantly given. That voltage is instantly given. Actually, what happens? Let me explain in little bit deep. What happens when this switch is closed? Voltage charge is stored, and we get output voltage Vc. Let's say it is five volt. Then the switch will be opened. One switch will be opened instantly. This ADC, what it will do? It will sample this one. That means it will convert whatever voltage is stored here. Now it is five volt is stored here. The five volt will be converted into digital power, digital signal, and it will be interpreted as one. Let's say the voltage stored two point five volt when S was closed. Now S is open. Then this two point five volt will be converted by ADC, and it will be interpreted as one. Why it will be interpreted as one? Because here. 2 to 5 volt it will be considered as 1 so 2.5 volt let's say this this 1.5 volt let's say this capacitor stores 1.5 volt okay then this this is open circuit now this this 1.0 volt will will be 1.0 volt will be converted into digital So whether it is zero or one, it is neither zero. It is neither one. Okay, why? Because for TTL logic, for TTL logic, zero point one point five volt it falls here in this region. So it cannot be zero. It cannot be one. So this is unpredictable, right? We cannot say zero or one. So what we have to remember to store the valid one to get the valid one or zero to get valid. to get to get valid one or zero the capacitor has to store the charge it has to store the charge for some finite amount of time and that time is related to setup time and hold time believe me this is what i understood okay because to store 5 volt capacitor capacitor has to sorry or uh, to get one one digital one the capacitor has to store the charge And it it should store the charge for some some finite amount of time. Let's say if capac, let's say this is one second, then two, then three, four, then five, then six, six, seven, eight, then nine, then ten. Okay. Let's say if capacitor store the charge for. Eight to ten seconds. Let's say zero to ten second. Zero to ten second. Then, sorry, not zero to ten second. Eight to ten second. Then it is considered as five volt. If it stores six to eight second, then it is let's say three volt. If it is, let's say three to five, then it is one point five volt. Let's say if it is zero to two. Then it is considered as 0.8 volt. I mean, zero to zero point eight volt. Now, 
let's say the capacitor stored the charge for 3 to 5 second then it will be considered as 1.5 volt and 1.5 volt is invalid data if it stores for 8 to 10 second this is 5 volt data this is a correct one because we, you get one if 6 to 8 se second the capacitor stores charge then 3 volt this is also correct one 0 to 2 second a 0 0.8 volt 0 to 0 point this is also correct data so here in this case 3 to 5 so capacitor has to store the charge for some finite amount of time to get valid data to get the valid data and this time period this time period is related to setup time and hold time okay and what exactly this capacitor how this capacitor this capacitor is related to the here this uh, our flip flop see this is my transmission gate this is my input d this is a capacitor actually and this capacitor is called drain capacitance so whatever data input data we have that will pass through this one and it will be stored here okay when this uh, clock when clock equal to zero when clock equal to one what will happen when clock equal to one this one will open circuit this one will be open right so there is no more input data coming and now this data will move here okay so i have written here you read this one because it is taking either it will take uh, else it will it is going to take a uh, lot of time so it is self explanatory all these lines are you read this one once and if you don't get then you ask me on the comment section and definitely i will try to help okay so this is how this uh, capacitor uh, capacitor is related to this setup time this setup time and hold time this is what i understood okay and that's why I try to explain this one. So it is all about uh, setup time and hold time. And I try to explain each and every concept that is related to setup time and hold time. And if you guys want that numerical analysis part, you know, this form that means this uh, equation part, setup time and uh, this hold time equation part, then you can ask me on the comment section. And I will definitely make videos on this one, okay? This equation. Anyhow, this is uh, more important. This part is the equation part. So I believe that you guys understood uh, whatever I explained and still if you have any doubt then you ask me okay on comment section. So thank you so much for watching.